everybody we greet you in jesus name it's awesome to see you happy new year greet your neighbor welcome each other and we're just gonna bless the lord together amen Shoo gives me strength. 
Yes, we do. 
We worship you, Father. Come on, are you excited this morning? We bless you, Jesus. I'm marching to battle, no doubt in my mind that my God is with me and victory is mine. I'll dance in the shadow of my enemy, cause God is my champion and he fights for me.
living King, this morning we worship you, Jesus. Be lifted up, be magnified in this place. We exalt you, Father. Amen and amen. Thank you, church. You may be seated. Well, good morning, everybody. We greet you in the name of Jesus. Are you all okay? Last I saw you was last year. But uh, yes, we are glad to see you all. Uh, please wish someone next to you a happy new year and a blessed and pro prosperous 2022. Uh, it's uh, nice to see you all and uh, we welcome you back uh, into this new year, first Sunday of the year. And uh, it's uh, good to be back and I pray that God will bless you, that this year will be a blessed one. Uh, despite all the challenges, despite all the difficulties. Uh, look, there's no 100% uh, uh, trouble-free year. Every year comes with its own challenges, but we serve a living God, amen? Serve a God who is faithful, a God who will get us through uh, everything, uh, every trouble that we may face. So uh, God bless you. Wish you all the best. The Bible says in Matthew 6, uh, 33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom, and you are here today to seek God first, that you put him first in everything you do for this year. You'll never go wrong, uh, and that God will bless you. want to welcome Joshua back to church after many years. Let's give him a nice round of applause. And, uh, uh, so I uh, welcome Josh. Anybody here for the first time? Any first time visitors? Uh, Marlon? No, nobody. All uh, regular, so we welcome you. God bless you, and um, we thank you for joining us. I think we had a wonderful New Year's service a powerful word that we must live in the anointing of God and uh, I know that we're going to uh, do that. So God bless you, you know, all the usual stuff. Let's give the team a nice round of applause. They are all on duty. Uh, we thank God for them. Uh, so remember the office will uh, reopen on uh, the 11th of January. Uh, so if you need anything, you can uh, call the other numbers. And uh, uh, But on the 11th, we will be opening. And then uh, Sunday service, uh, 7.30 a.m. and 9.30 uh, a.m. Uh, so remember that. And then also, uh, what else? Um, uh, drivers, yes, drivers. We need drivers. Uh, well, if you have your PDB or if you want to assist us uh, with driving the bus and others, uh, we can send you for the PDP uh, and uh, we'll get that sorted for you. Joshua will pay those fees for us. But yes, um, if you want to help uh, with the church, uh, get involved in the church, we welcome you. You're welcome to join us. Uh, the only uh, uh, requirement that we have for that, if you're joining the church, is you must have a heart. So that's the only requirement. All of you have hearts, so you can serve the Lord. Uh, you must do that. And remember, Tuesday prayer meeting. This Tuesday, there's no prayer meeting. That's the 4th of January. But uh, we will resume once again. We'll tell you more about that. Please put your hands together for that. Uh, Thank you, uh, Sid. God bless you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Pastor Brian. Good morning, family of God. Uh, and the Lord bless you this morning. The first Sunday after New Year is a very hard Sunday. Uh, most people haven't gotten up yet from New Year's. Some people just be sleeping, but we're happy that you are here. The Lord bless you. Morning, Pastor Brian on, uh, and Pastor Noreen, all the other pastors. God bless you. So I want to warmly welcome you on behalf of Pastor Brian, Noreen, Pastor Sid, Shelda, and all the rest of it. Are you all happy this morning? All right. Very good. Very, very good. A uh, miracle happened this morning. So good morning to those who are watching us by live stream. Uh, we usually we come to the office there, we have some tea because uh, we're all rushing and coming. So we have some tea and a miracle happened this morning. We had three crumpets. So I had one, thanks to Rani, and then I offered Sid the other one. He said no. <laughs> that, <laughs> that is a miracle from God. <laughs> it also had cream blueberry jam, I think, but uh, and I, I asked him, are you going on a diet or something? He said, no. But anyway, well, Shelda, thank you. Amen. Uh, we're going to um, listen to the word of the Lord, and then when we are done, then Pastor Brian is going to minister, administer the communion to you this morning. Uh, 
I was under the impression that uh, we are having sacrament this morning. And I said to Miriam, we must get there early because Duren, will, Duren of course, lost his mom. Please, we offer him our condolences. The Lord bless his family. Uh, so I said, let's just go and check what happened. And the lady said, no, we don't have communion on the first Sunday. They said, last year, 2021, we didn't have. I said, yeah, because it was COVID. We didn't have. They tried to bluff me, but uh, I'm not that old. I'm old, but God bless you. So the Lord bless you this morning. We're going to pray for everybody that lost their loved ones, people who had lost their businesses, others who are having some kind of turmoil in their life. Let's just pray that God will bless them. Let's just sing the song, uh, the, 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 when peace, it is well with my soul. Just sing the first stanza and the, and the, and the, the, the chorus. I'm going to ask Joel to pray for us after that, for the family of God, that God will bless us. When peace like a Father, we thank you, Lord, that once again we could be found in your presence. Indeed, Lord, you are a mighty and a great God. Without you, Lord, we can do nothing. The first Sunday, Lord, for 2022, that you brought us to your house, my God. Thank you, God, Father, for what you're going to do for us for this year. For everything that you have got planned for us this year, my God, we know that you're going to take us through this year. It's going to be a better year than 2021, my Father. As you, you, the songwriter says, it is going to be well with our soul for 2022, my God. We thank you, Lord, for your servant, Lord, as he brings forth your word to us, my God. May it be a blessing to our heart. May it be a word, Lord, for 2022 that we go forward, my God, in your name, my Father. We thank you for each and every one of us that is here, found in your presence. You're going to be with us even as we go. Your Holy Spirit is going to be here. We ask it in Jesus' precious and ever-failing name. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a good praise offering. Amen. Amen. Give the team a good praise offering this morning. Amen want you to repeat after me this morning say my life is blessed by the father the word today will manifest in my life because i am living in the anointing of the holy spirit amen give the lord a praise offering so welcome to those who are watching by live stream the psalm number 23 says the lord is my shepherd I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 
You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You're going to receive the sacrament later on today. Some of you at home will be receiving and uh, sharing in the communion. But I want you to look at this verse number 5 where David says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. Now, David speaks about the table of the Lord. That's what he's talking about. God prepares a table for David in the wilderness. Of course, you understand that that is not a literal table. It's a figurative uh, reference to what God does for him. But the Holy Communion bears the connotation of the table. When you talk about Holy Sacrament and you talk about Holy Communion, you also talk about the table of the Lord. That's how we refer to it as in the Bible. So Jesus, when he instituted the communion in Luke 22, the Bible says, nine, verse number 19, he took bread, gave thanks, and it says, broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do it in remembrance of me. This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Verse 21 says, behold, the hand of my betrayer is here with me on the table. 29 I bestow upon you a kingdom just as my father did, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. Twice in those verses, Jesus makes reference to the table. But Jesus is giving them the holy communion, breaking bread. The apostle Paul also referred to the communion as the table of the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 21, he says... You cannot drink of the table of the Lord, drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons, and you cannot partake of the Lord's table and the table of the demons. So, when we talk about communion, we speak about the table. Everybody says table, come on. So, Paul is talking about the table. Jesus Christ says there's a table. So, you're establishing this morning one important thing, that when you talk about the communion, talk about the sacrament, you can refer to it, as the table of the almighty God. And that settles it. And then there's the warning here. That you can also have the table of the devil. Demons tables. Now if we've got here grape juice and bread. I don't want to leave it to your imagination. I'll leave it to your imagination rather. To establish what the devil has on his table. Including vomit. So all of these things. That's what the Bible speaks about. So we establish the fact that when you're talking about sacrament. You're talking about holy communion. You're referring to the table of the almighty God. Now the first mention of table in the Bible. Is found in Exodus chapter 25 and verse number 22. The Bible tells us that Moses is building the table. Tabernacle of the Lord. When you look at the tabernacle of the Lord, when you look at the pattern that God gave to Moses, you will find normally in any construction, you will find that they will put these outer walls, they'll build up everything outside and all the rest of it, and they'll come in and they'll start doing the interior work. But in the picture of the tabernacle, God does not do that. God starts from the holiest place, and from there, everything goes forth. But just that as, a, uh, as something for you to remember. But when he talks about the, the, the holy place, the Bible talks about the table. Here's the verse, 22 of 25 in Exodus. You shall also make a table of acacia wood. Acacia wood was very difficult, hard uh, uh, wood with a lot of knots in it. Two cubits shall be its length, a cubit its width, and a cubit and a half its height. Cubit is about uh, whatever, 18 or whatever inches or whatever it is. And you shall overlay it with pure gold, make a molding of all gold, of gold all around. And you shall shet, set on the table the showbread always before me. So God says, in that tabernacle, you, uh, that Moses is building. There's the outer court. There's the holy place and the holiest place. He said, in that holy place, you make this table, overlay it with gold, and put the bread on the table. Again, a picture of the holy sacrament. A table in the holy place. Now, within that holy place where the table was, there's the golden candle stand, seven branched. 
um, you'll see that in, in the Jewish customs and elsewhere. Seven branched candlestick that was standing there. In that holy place where the temp uh, table was, you will also find just before the veil going into the holiest place, you will see there that there is the altar of incense where the coal was and then uh, the, the priest would go there and put the incense on and offer the prayers for the saints. That's what Zechariah did in Zechariah chapter 1. So the seven branched ca golden candle stand, the altar of incense and now bread on the table. Now I want you to notice this. This place of the table is filled with the presence of the Lord. So when the Bible is talking about a table, that table has the presence. That table in the tabernacle, there's the candlestick. There's the bread on the table. There's the, 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 the incense being offered and there's smoke filling that. And that table is surrounded by the presence of God. You must remember, my beloved, whenever there is a table established, that the presence of the Lord is there. Doesn't matter who's serving it or what is happening, but there is a table, and you must understand that that is a table of the Lord. The priest came in surrounded by the presence of the Lord. Filled with the light of God, filled with the incense, filled with the rising of the smoke that's coming out of there, and filled with the presence of the Lord, right in the presence of God, the table is there. I am praying today that as you take the sacrament, and whenever you take the sacrament, establish in the Lord's table, that you will have the presence of God, that you will not drink this commonly, that you will not take this commonly. You will understand when I'm having this bread. I'm eating uh, this bread uh, that's the body of the Lord, that the blood of the Lord was shed for me. I'm partaking of it. God, let your presence fill me. Let your power fill me. Wherever you're having it, the Lord's presence surrounds the table. Say hallelujah. There must be respect. There must be reverence because you are partaking of something that was ordained by the Lord and something that was prefigured many, many thousands of years ago. Are you hearing me this morning? Say hallelujah to the Lord. Good. Now, this table, the Holy Communion, we are sharing today has the same connotation as the table in the tabernacle. That's exactly what I said now. So this table here is not a simple thing. It's not an ordinary thing. It's something special. The God who was in the tabernacle when the priest went in, he's the same God here today. Later in Solomon's temple, when they built that temple, same God. We must engage God at the table. That means when I'm coming to the table, I'm engaging with God. I'm not worried about the ushers. I'm not worried about all the stuff. I am engaging with God. Just as that light was in the temple, I'm saying, let your light shine upon me. Just as that temple was filled with prayers, I'm saying, let the prayers of the saints fill my heart. Just as that smoke came and that priest went in there to call upon the Lord, you will do that. My beloved, I want the table to have meaning for you. I don't want you to come and eat and laugh and get out and say, Ah, oh, we had sacrament. When you hold this in your hand, this is special. When I take the bread, this is special. Why? God ordained it. He didn't bring it yesterday. Thousands of years ago, he showed me the picture. Now I'm taking part in this. I don't deserve it, but God gave it to me. And when I do that, I want it to move me, to shift me. God must do something in my life. Say hallelujah. Nothing in the house of God is done for vanity. Everything has a purpose. And you tell the Lord, the sacrament must have purpose. Somebody say hallelujah. Now, so David says, you uh, set a table before me in the wilderness. This is not a temple. In the wilderness, and he says, right in the presence of my enemies. And that's a story for another day, but we can still do something today. So David says, I've got a table in the wilderness. David was accustomed to the table. So we talked about the table. We said table means the communion, etc., etc. You know that Jesus said that. Paul said that in 1 Corinthians 10. 
Then it was prefigured in Exodus 25 as Moses built the tabernacle. And David, Psalm 23, is talking about the table of the table in the wilderness. Now, David had another table in his life. David sat at a table. And I want to show you what happened at the table. See, now the picture here is, he's in the wilderness. And he says, you're preparing a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. He says, I've got a table of the Lord here. And I'm telling you what surrounds that table. That is the part, uh, or it's something that refers to the sacrament that we have. But now, David did have a table in his life. He sat at a table. And I want to draw your attention to that today. Saul is king. And you remember David was anointed. God was replacing Saul. But he anointed David as king. And Samuel went to the house, anointed him as king. In 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 24. David hid in the field. And when the new moon was come, the king sat down to eat the feast. King sat on his seat at other times on a seat by the wall. And Jonathan arose and Abner sat by Saul's side. But David's place was empty. So what you're looking at is David was being hounded by Saul. Saul didn't like him. Saul hated him because God anointed him as king. Saul couldn't bear that. But the Bible says David asks Jonathan who's Saul's son, his friend, to just keep a watch on things for him. But Saul is at his table. Abner is there. Jonathan is there. Abner is the chief officer of his army. And, 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 and Jonathan, his son, is there. But it says David's seat is empty. So he used to sit there. But tonight, he's absent from that table. Are you hearing me? The second day in a row, David is not at the table. Verse 27. It happened the next day, the second day of the month, that David's place was empty. And Saul said to Jonathan, his son, why has the son of Jesse not come to eat either yesterday or today? First day, David is absent. His seat at the table is not taken. Second day, Saul is seeing this fellow is not on that table. And he's asking his son, Jonathan, where is David? Jonathan makes an excuse. He has not come. Uh, in verse 29, Jonathan makes an excuse, says he had to go to a family function. But that wasn't the case. Verse 30, Saul's anger was aroused at Jonathan. Therefore, he said, bring him to me. Send for him, bring him. Verse 31, he will die. Are you hearing me? He said, I want to kill him. Bring him here. And Jonathan answered his father and said, why should he be killed? What has he done? Saul cast a spear at him to kill him, by which Jonathan knew it was determined by his father to kill David. David didn't go to that table. That night, Saul was going to hit him with that javelin. But David was away from there. God kept him away from that table. Are you hearing me? You, are you listening to me? There is a table somewhere. There is a table somewhere that the devil has set up for your destruction. If the Lord is not your shepherd, you'll get a javelin through your heart. Warn your children. Sid and Shelda told me, Pastor, they said we're having a bry with the people at their complex in Amsloti. I called him. I said, listen to your father. I said, do you know there was a time you didn't listen to me? You know the consequences? He said, yes, dad. I said, listen to me. The moment those guests open a champagne bottle, grab your children and your wife, go back into your apartment. Are you hearing me? There's a table. There's a table where Saul is waiting. Be careful. Not every table is set up for your benefit. 
Don't run to everybody's party. Hello? Don't send your children to everybody's function. Watch the table. And now be careful. Don't bring Saul to your own house. He'll kill you in your own house. Because he's carrying a dagger in the back. Are you hearing me? Why do we have so many casualties? They said, <laughs> I don't know how good that laugh is. God bless you. Sit. Laughing. Revelry. Very soon your pockets are empty. Very soon your wallets are empty. Very soon your life is empty. Why? You didn't discern. When he's saying, you prepared a table before me in the wilderness, you anoint in the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil. You know what he's saying? There's only one reason I escaped, because one day Samuel came to my house. He poured the oil. Are you listening to me? Oh my God, thank God for the anointing in your life. If you're living by the anointing, when Saul calls you, say no. I am not coming. I am not coming to your table. For you, 2022, watch the table. And he threw that javelin. And his son knew this was supposed to be David's death day. So David is king. Now, in this 23rd Psalm, he says, you prepare a table before me. That's your table. You put a table before me in the presence of my enemies. When God establishes a table for you, the enemy has no power over you. God, and this table is established by God. And he says, listen. He says, uh, your uh, he says listen to this. God prepares the table. Tell your neighbor, prepared. Ah, I like this. I went to see Salosh and, and, and Reg yesterday. Uh, I knew this was a good table because they had David at their table. <laughs> they, had a, <laughs> they had a Molopo at their table. But I knew it was a good table. But when we got there, Salosh had everything ready. I go to some places, Pastor, you want to have tea? Hey, we got no milk here. So we go get some milk. Uh, pull something out of the refrigerator. When you come to God's table, it's already prepared. <laughs> He's not waiting to do something. The power of this table, the efficacy of this table, has already been prepared. So he says he prepared the table for, for me. He's done it before I even thought about it. And then he says, in the presence of my enemies. This is not a hidden table. It's not a private table. It's the presence of the Lord. And it's not about my friends. Nothing. It's in the presence of my enemies. I don't care what you think. What you th oh, know about it. But we're having the table of celebration. In the presence of the enemy. And you know I'll tell you something. God's table is never empty. Ladies and gentlemen. When you have the communion. Let me tell you that communion will break the powers of darkness. Bring in your finances. Heal your bodies. Set the captive spring. Bring deliverance, life, light, energy to your body. Why? Because it's the broken body of the Lord. It's the shed blood of the Lord. There is nothing in all the earth that is more powerful than the broken body and the shed blood of the Lord. This thing has power. That's why we sing there is power in the Lord, but blood never empty. It comes with an anointing. What a beautiful, he said, you anoint my head with oil. His head was anointed to keep him cool. No dizzy spells. Table has an overflow. He says, my cup runs over. Man, God is good. That overflow is bringing goodness, all things from God. Mercy overflows. I'll tell you what, when you're having the sacrament, there's an overflow. You don't have to worry. If you are having it with the right mind and attitude, God will bless you. I told you the other day, I think on another occasion, I told you about, you know the old times we used to cast out demons, Pastor, we used to go, whole night we sing, Joel, we used to sing, I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood. We sang, we danced, and all. 
Sharon Pillay, Chella will tell you. These are um, demon castles. Ragani is here. The trio is here. This, ay, yeah, yeah. Demon busting trio is here. The quartet is made up of Anita Inderjit. So oh, the quartet of demon busters is here. We used to sing the whole night. I know it was the blood. we we'll pump it up, pump it. Your turn to pray. My turn to pray. Go. <laughs> whole night. Morning come. They ask you, hello, pastor. Hello. What happened? Sore throat. Can't talk in it. <laughs> so we used to do that. So a fellow went from our forum, one of our pastors, Pastor Morgan. And he's not a great apostle. He's just a pastor. He goes there to a house. The lady said, Oh, we got a tokloshk in our house. And uh, he said he wanted to pray. And then the Lord said to him, hey, don't pray here. Just tell this lady, have this holy sacrament. Every morning and afternoon, have the sacrament. Three days she's having the sacrament. The fourth day, that tokolosh is gone. Went back to Bitwater's land. <laughs> Wherever. <laughs> went back. Why? Power in this thing. Power. Now, we are the recipients of the blessing of the Lord. Table in Psalm 23. Psalm 23 is not for funerals. We just use it because of comfort. We use it on special occasions. We use it when people are sick. Outside Christian circles, they read the psalm as well. But they don't know the power. Now, here comes your, here are some spiritual insights into your table. I want you to see what this table means. Today, every time you come for the communion, whatever you do, I want you to see how powerful this thing is for you. As you have the sacrament. This table was a catalyst for David to become greater. The table in the wilderness, that was something that pushed him into his destiny. That's what the table does. It will move you to the next level, it will elevate you. It will push you to your destiny. There's power in this thing. Jesus said, I'm giving my life for you. My body is broken for you. My blood is shed for you. I'm giving it to you. You will have this life. Can you imagine the power of the life of Christ in you as you have this? So here you are. Your table... Now listen, the first thing I want to tell you about that table is as we come to the closure of what we need today. Your table must not lead to selfishness. Are you hearing me? It mustn't become a table where I am happy. I am blessed. I am filled. Everything is okay in my life. I know what I have. I'm filled. I'm having a great life. I am enjoying my life. I'm enjoying my family and all the rest of it. But listen, uh, your table must become a blessing. Because I partake of what God has given to me, I want to be a blessing to other people. When you take the Holy Sacrament, your selfishness dies. You cannot have the bread and wine and still remain a selfish person. You cannot have the bread and wine and remain an arrogant person. You cannot have the bread and wine and remain a rude person. It alters your entire life. The Roman Catholic Church reveres this so much. They don't let you touch the wafer. They put it in your mouth for you. You know why? They understand the potency of this thing. And you must understand that this thing has power. And this power removes everything from my life. My sins are forgiven. Not just that, but I have a completely brand new life. Every time you partake, we partake about 12 times or more a year here. God help. Not, this is not to quench your thirst or your children's thirst. Tell the child, I'm giving it to you because Jesus died on the cross. Shed his blood. That's why. Teach them that. It must be there for you. Now, I'm saying it mustn't be a selfish table. Now, David is anointed as king of Israel, the man with the table. 
Now he has a table of blessing. You see, the story is that Saul is defeated. Saul dies. David is now king. Uh, and the Bible tells us, as you read from 1 Samuel, the end of the chapter and end of the book, David becomes king. He's ruling. And then David is very, very happy. You know, when you're blessed by God, his table in the wilderness led him to the blessings of the Lord. He becomes king, ruling. Everything is fine. David has everything he wants. How many of you like to be there? Now, my beloved, God will only take you to where you want to be if he knows you're going to be responsible there. God knows you can't lie. You can't lie to God. He'll give you the business if he knows you're going to handle it well. He'll give you that promotion if he knows you're going to handle it well. If you couldn't handle it before you got the promotion, God can't trust you with the promotion. If in your small business where you were selling samosas, etc., don't think if you're not faithful there, he's not going to give you the store in Gateway. You do this faithfully, God. So David was faithful. God blesses him. Now, when God blesses you, don't forget the people in your life. Hello? That's what the table is about. That's what. And a lot of people forget. Pastor Brian will give you a list. I'll give you a list. We'll all give you lists of people who are blessed and they forgot about what God did for them. David says this. I'm getting somewhere you'll get with me today. 2 Kings chapter 9. David is asking a question, verse number 1. Is there still anyone who is left of the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Three. Is there not still someone of the house of Saul to whom I may show the kindness of God? Ziba said to the king, there is a son of Jonathan who is lame in his feet. The king said to him, where is he? And they brought Mephibosheth to David. Now listen, David is king. But he didn't forget who helped him on the road. Jonathan helped him. Don't forget the people who blessed you. Communion does that. Are you hearing me? Go back, bless them, do something. He says, I want to show kindness to Saul's house. Is there anybody left? And they say, yes, there's Mephibosheth. Jonathan's son. This is Saul's grandson. And David says, bring this fellow. They said, no, this fellow's lame. He can't walk. He comes to David, verse number six. David said, Mephibosheth. He answered, here is your servant. David says, do not fear. I will show you kindness for Jonathan, your father's sake. I will restore to you all the land of Saul, your grandfather. You shall eat bread at my table. Hello? Are you hearing me? You shall eat bread at my table. Mephibosheth, verse number 8, bowed himself and said, What is your servant that you should look upon such a dead dog as me? He says, I'm a dog. I'm, a, I'm nothing. Hey, listen. David has a table. You know the man who was wanting to throw the javelin at him? David is inviting his grandson. He says, come and sit at my table. David could have said, your grandfather wanted to kill me. You got no place. He said, come. Come sit at my table. And you know what Mephibosheth realizes? He says, I'm a dog. Why do you want me? He's like a dog. And he also says, I am lame. But David says, I got my table. Come and sit at my table. Come and sit at my table. Watch. Watch this. He says he's a dog. Listen, David says this. Mephibosheth, your master's son, shall eat bread at my table always. I want to keep him here, not for a day, all the time. Then he says, 
Verse 11, as for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table like one of the king's sons. He thinks he's a dog. I'm making him a son at my table. Are you hearing me? He thinks he's nothing. And then the Bible says, Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem for he ate continually at the king's table. He was lame in both his feet. David has his table. He's bringing the son, grandson, of a man who hated him, wanted to kill him, sit at my table. That fellow, he says, I'm like a dog. David says, I'm making you a son. I've got no table, but you sit at my table. Are you hearing me? Continually. He says he's lame. I can't walk. The nurse dropped him. You can read that in 2 Samuel chapter 5. David says, you can sit at my table. Bring that thing for me. Bring that cover from the mirror. Thank you. You see, this fellow is lame. He can't walk. Bring, bring, bring. Don't fright. They are watching you. You see, when you sit at the table, when you sit at a table and you have a table here, you can't see the lameness. Who knows what's under the table? Nobody. Why? Because it's covered. You know what David is saying? I don't care about your lameness, but you sit at my table. Now you got a table. So what I want you to do this morning is, all of you, you must partake of the Lord's table in your house. You must have your own table. But that table is where you say, I'm not literally table. You can have it on your, you're having, it's a metaphorical table. Even if you're having it, you don't have place. You're having it on your countertop, whatever, wherever you're having it. But you're having the sacrament. That means my house got a table. Are you hearing me? Tell your neighbor I'm establishing a table. Ah, but remember, somebody tried to kill you sometimes. People hated you. Didn't they hate you on your journey? Yeah, but when you're establishing the table, something must happen in your heart. Hello? Come on, talk to me. How can you have this celebration? David's own table becomes a table of restoration. He says to the man, you're not a dog. You become a son. You're not a visitor. Permanent lameness. You partake of the Lord's table. Every home should have a table. 1 Corinthians chapter one, uh, nine, uh, 11, the Lord's table. Not, listen, it's the Lord's table. You know when you're having the table in your house? It's not yours. You bought the grape juice, right? You bought the bread. It's not yours. Hello? Tell your neighbor it's not your table. You don't say you can have the communion. You can't. Anybody. The table belongs to the? So when you set out the communion, if you didn't talk to your husband last night, you don't tell him, hey, you, you can't take the communion. You didn't. No, 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 no. Not your table. God's table. Lord's table. Wife too. You say, you got a big mouth. You, you can't take the. You, she let her have two glasses. Go on, whatever. Are you hearing me? Tell your neighbor, tell, point to your neighbor. Say, it's not your table. Yeah, not your table. Not for you to eat and drink and apply the blood. Oh, you know, and then you're putting, pay, pay, putting on your WhatsApp status. This morning we got up at 5.30 a.m. We partook of the Lord's table. <laughs> Telling everybody, oh, uh, because you want everyone to know, uh, we must go and buy the, the, the grape Kaiser today. Man, we, we ran out. I must ask uh, Sister Nevosh for some wafers. We need that so badly. <laughs> you know, uh, and all that. But they shut up. <laughs> Don't. Your table is not for showing off. Your table. Hear me. Your table. 
must let the person, even the one who is like a dog, sit with you. We got a lot of carnal attitude. That table is not for people who got strong legs and are fit. The table is for lame people. You know who's the lame person? The lame person is the fellow who told you, I'm not smoking, but when he comes, you're smelling the cigarette on him. He says, no, I was riding in the taxi. The smoke came on him. <laughs> Lame fellow. <laughs> you know him. He's here this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Lame. You know what you're telling him? Come, come, come. Then he came. The lame fellow is fella. You say, good morning. <laughs> good morning. And he said, what happened? He said, I went to the party. I didn't know. I thought it was Coke, he told you. He drank it. That's the lame fellow. Lame fellow. Girl who made a mistake. She got pregnant. Sit at the table. Lame person. The one who spent the money gambling. Never mind sit at the table. The lame person, the one you have to scold to come to church, argue and fight. You know what? Our job, yours and mine. Come on. One day somebody tried to kill me at the table. But now when God gives me the table, I want you to be a part. Hey! And her husband comes. Oh, you call me this rubbish fella? Yeah, this rubbish woman. Yeah, yeah. And you're running. <laughs> Say, hey, the table covered this lameness. You ask, you see, that blood and body makes you blind to defects. Why? Because you and I are worse than what we think others. My flesh is very bad. Your flesh, I know, you've got good flesh. You're from long berries, your flesh is gone. <laughs> long berry only got mutton. <laughs> but you'll be amazed. Yeah, you know, some of us things. I know some people, every day one... Lady, she's asking her husband, examine my shoulder blades, examine my shoulder blades. He asks you why. She said, I want to see if my wings are growing. She said, <laughs> <laughs> she wants to fly away. <laughs> hey, brothers, sisters, we all got lameness, Pastor. We all got lameness. And you know what? When we're at his table, that's why, that's why we're not condemning anybody. We're not writing them. We're saying, God, you are in charge. You know everything. And when I have a table where I celebrate the sacrament, I'll just do what God wants me to do. So establish the table. 2022. Your house, my house. It's a time for us. To bring in the lame, bring in the dog, even that person who tried to kill us. We're saying, we got place for you. Why? Because one day I was in need. Somebody came to my assistance. <laughs> Isn't that right? Somebody came to my assistance. So we're going to pray with you this morning. And I'm going to ask Pastor Brian to administer the sacrament to you. Take it. You have family members and all the rest of it. First, we're just going to have some prayer. And we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to help us this morning. In the name of Jesus, that grace will come to us. Just bow your heads. Bow your heads. Hallelujah. 
Bow your heads in prayer as we ask Jesus to bless us. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. What can wash away my stain? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, Sing the second stanza. to ask Basil to pray for us this morning as Pastor comes and shares this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your presence here. We thank you for your anointing, Father. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for the word, Lord. What a beautiful word, Father. We thank you that it moved in our hearts. We thank you that it changed our being, Lord. Thank you for being with us, Lord. Thank you for all your blessings. We pray that as we partake of the sacrament, you're also going to bless it, Lord. Let it be a blessing to our bodies and our, our lives, Lord. I thank you once again, Holy Spirit. You are so awesome. Bless your name. Amen. Oh, precious. Let's come forward, please. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. What a privilege, what an occasion this is this morning for us. First Sunday for 2022. And for us to be and be at the presence of the Lord's table. You know, we heard it this morning. It's not your table. It's not my table. It's a Lord's table. The Lord prepared this table. When we look at this table, what is it we see? It's the mercy of God. God's mercy. You don't qualify. I don't qualify. This is God's pity for you and I. You see, there's nothing we could do for our sins but God's mercy and God's pity said I will make a way for mankind so you and I are here today because of the mercy of God we thank God for grace grace is God's uh, uh, favor but mercy is God's pity so when you look at the table of the Lord this is God's pity for man for you and for me so you're here this morning and as pastor said this morning somewhere along the line you know the Bible says 
examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. The Bible tells us that if you, you know, if, 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 you, if, if you've done anything that's unpleasing in the sight of God, you have an opportunity this morning to make peace with God. So this is God's table. He says, do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. So I think the stewards will be, uh, will be uh, adding the uh, emblems over to you. The broken body and my shed. He said, this is my body being broken for you. This is my blood which has been shed for you. Remember, it's the Lord's body has been broken. He says, do this in remembrance of me. Beloved, you must never ever forget what God has done for you and me. We are what we are because of the goodness and the grace of God. Amen? We are. So, this morning you have an opportunity. As the table comes to you, as the broken body and the shed blood comes to you, you have an opportunity this morning to say, Lord, if somewhere along the line, if I messed up, I've done anything wrong with my life, I want to make peace with you. So, in other words, this table of the Lord gives you an opportunity to make peace with God. So let's give the Lord a round of praise for that. Remember, this, the Lord has granted you and me an opportunity. So let's just close our eyes this morning. Just bow your head for a moment. Father, we thank you. We bless and praise you for this table. Lord, this is your table. Thank you. You says, do this in remembrance of me. This morning, as a congregation, we will never ever forget. Lord, we will always remember the goodness and the mercy of God. You made a way for us. You plucked us out from where we were. Lord, you cleansed us. You lifted us up from where we are, where we were. Today we are on holy ground. We stand on holy ground. This morning we make our peace with you. If there's anything, Lord, that we've done wrong this morning, Lord, we lift our hearts to you. We say, Lord, forgive us. Try us one more time. We believe this morning, Father, after sitting at your table and parting of your emblem, we will be lifted up from where we are. We will never be the same again. I want you to believe God this morning, beloved, that you will never be the same again. 2022, you will be more than a conqueror. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you must say within yourself, I will arise this morning. I will arise above all situations and circumstances. I will. I thank you, Lord, this morning for your table. So bless me today, even as I partake of it. I thank you in Jesus' name. And God, people said, Amen. Thank you. Over the mountains and the sea, your emeralds will up for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healing set me free. I'm happy to be in your truth.
Father, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The stewards are still coming to you this morning. Pray the Lord will bless you. We remember those that are sick today, that God will touch them. Praying in particular for um, Meryl, who's unwell. We're also remembering our sister Priscilla's brother, Emmanuel, that God will touch them. If you have someone who's unwell, we're believing God for great grace this morning, great healing great deliverance and the power of the living God upon the lives of his beloved people. We believe that God will touch them. Father, in the name of Jesus, just touch your people. Heal them this morning. Give them grace. Give them mercy. Give them power. Give them peace. Give them love. Give us a good year. Give us a good day. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let's stand together as we close. What do you want? Hallelujah. Come, let's close this morning. Beautiful first Sunday. We'll close with the blessings of the Lord. Hallelujah. The blood that Jesus shed for me. Well, then.